101-ish. And let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, hello everyone. I see Jeffrey up there. Any other staff online, I imagine. All right, let's do roll call. Okay. Director Underhill. Here. Director Ratterman. Here. Director Davidson. Here. Director Thomas. I'm here. President Cicada. Here. And now's the time for a public comment. At this time, members of the public may address the board on any non-agendized item. The public is encouraged to work through staff to place items on the agenda for board consideration. No action can be taken on matters not listed on the agenda. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Any public comment out there on remote? We do have public on. And any comments from the public remotely? Seeing none. If there's no other public comment, I think it's a good opportunity um, to introduce some new staff. So Jessica, do you wanna do the honors? Um, so I think all of us here at CCW are really excited about the changes and new staffing that um, that we've brought on, but I think me more than anyone else. It's so <laughs> thankful and so happy that uh, customer service is fully staffed. Um, so we have three new faces here. I'm going to start with the, the person who started um, uh, least recent, I guess, first who started. So Sheldon, I know that we've talked about him. So we're super lucky to have him. We um, we have him here through Mother's oh, job, job training. He started in late November. So he's sitting at our front desk answering phones. He's in, amazing with our customers, super calm, and um, he's doing a really good job. Um, so that's Sheldon. Hi, Sheldon. Welcome. <laughs> is Kate Darby. So Kate Darby started last week. She's our new customer service representative, the limited term position. Um, Kate comes from working for um, in the public sector uh, most recently with uh, Bret Hart Union School District. She was an IT coordinator there, worked both with students and staff. She also worked for Calvers County Office of Education um, as an office assistant. So she worked closely with the public as uh, assisting the public with their needs as well as coordinating their monthly board meeting. So we're happy to have Kate here. Welcome, Kate. Okay. And last but not least is Kelly Richards. She started on Monday. She is our new customer service supervisor. Um, she comes with a lot of um, knowledge and experience. She was uh, the utility building and customer service supervisor for Dublin San Ramon Services District for the past couple of years. Before that, for 12 years, she was the senior customer service representative for City of Pleasanton. She has been involved with the implementation of both AMI and Tyler, and at the same time. So, I'm very excited to have her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank we you, have, Kelly. Famous. That's for all of you, but. <laughs> Well, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, welcome to all three of you. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's, you for all being here. You can say something if you want. They don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't let her put you on the spot. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. All right, Sheldon. You <laughs> may as well. Not very good at these things, but. Uh, <laughs> Appreciated the opportunity and just a great cool opportunity for you guys. And it's very, very nice. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Sheldon. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Look Sheldon. forward to working. Sheldon, what what is the breed of your dog? Oh, uh, that's a Japanese Vegeta. Very, very beautiful Vegeta. animal. Don't you see him coming, coming in the building? Yeah. Yeah. We 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 have staff break dogs to work. 
Michael? What's that? I don't think we're allowed Staff to ask any bring. questions right now. <laughs> no, I, I just I saw him coming in the building. I just, just he's a very beautiful dog. I like dogs. So we have a yeah. dogs at work policy. We have a we, we have which I don't a, mind. I love dogs. Occasionally we have dogs in the office. Yeah. We have just no cats. Office. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We have two in the office today. At the same time. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. All right. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Welcome to um, our new customer service rep. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. Following items are. So, so get back to work and take care of some customers. <laughs> I know. It's answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> okay. <important. laughs> no, no. That's, Ready? That was very refreshing. It was. I liked yes. it. I enjoyed it. Okay, back to me. The con consent so agenda. That. The following items are expected to be routine, non-controversial. Items will be acted upon by the board at one time without discussion. Any board <clears> member <throat> may request that an item be removed for later discussion. And um, before I ask for a motion, um, Michael, I'll, I don't give me I'll one second. Pull 3B. OK, we'll pull 3B, but we're not going to be doing the um, able to work remotely resolution. That would be uh, on the next one. Next one. Every <laughs> Thank you. Days. Yeah. Just checking. OK, so can I get a um, motion? Motion acceptance 3A. Second. All right, any public comment? Online, Rebecca, any public comment? You don't need to take public comment on the consent agenda. <clears throat> well, fine. How do you do that? <laughs> Except for the item that's pulled. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for that. So I'm going to remove that note here for next time. <laughs> okay, can we have a vote, please? Can we get a vote on it, Scott? What was done? Yeah. <laughs> you have four right. people watching me, Sunday. <laughs> you know what? I'm okay now. That's Dr good. Director Underhill? Yes. Director Ratterman? Yes. Director Davidson? Yes. Director Thomas? Yes. President Cicada? Yes. Oh, okay. Excuse me. On um, 3B, um, we're going to be doing um, 26 acres, or excuse me, 226 acres. So the majority of that is not CCWD property. It's um, th So what we're approving here is just uh, approval of that piece of it that is CCWD property. So it's a larger project than just a CCWD property, but it extends a, around the Hunter's Reservoir area. Um, it's a, a great project. We'll, we'll send a letter of support along with the grant application as well, but they needed um, consent from property owners and we're one of the property owners. So that's all this is here. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, how much are we going to be involved, did you say? We're not um, the grant applicant. Um, it's it's really run by the Calam team, um, the ones that did our West Arnold West End project. It's Pat McGreevy and Jan Bray, that same same group that are that are doing the the legwork on it. And Utica is the fiscal agent for it, so they're teaming up as the grant applicant. Um, but we and we're we're a property owner and supporter of right, the project. Right. Okay. Okay. And so we'll be seeing a lot of construction up there or lots of trucks. More like devastation. Yeah. <laughs> but good. Tearing down more than building up. So uh -huh. yeah. Uh, okay. fuel thinning though. It should look I'm I'm sure it'll look great. It'll be, be a big improvement to the landscape. So okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion. Move right. for acceptance of three B. Second. Second. All right. Any public comment on item three B? Seeing none, can we have a vote? Oh, I guess I could just do the. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Pass. And am I supposed to say that passes, or are you going to do that? Passes. Thank you. You, you know, by the time I uh, get done being president, I'll finally understand what to do. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> okay, moving on. New business. <clears throat> Uh, discussion action regarding the mid-year fiscal year 2021-22 operating and capital improvement program budgets and that's going to be Mr. Jeffrey Myers. 
Good morning, Madam, or afternoon, Madam President, members of the board, uh, Jeff Meyer from Hilltop Securities. Uh, I'm gonna be working with this item conjunctively with Michael, because we've got a little bit of changes that have gone on, and I wanna ask him to step in here and help explain it, because he can provide better insight. That being said, um, you, as you're aware, and you've done this many times, the mid-year budget review, is to look back on the first six months of 22, July 1 through December 30th, 31st. Look at revenues, we look at expenditures, we work with staff to figure out items that were not included in the budget that we may want to add to it. And in this particular case, there are several items that we want to add. We are not going to be making any changes that around within say, the service and supplies budget. These are all changes that require your board's approval. And with that, I'd like to first start out and explain where we're getting the money to spend this, uh, in, increase our expenditures, and then I'll go through the different expenditures. There's actually uh, four areas of where we are getting revenues to um, fund these, these increases. The first is a OES request for public assistance grant that the, the district applied for. And in January, we received a check for $50,014. This, these covered costs from going back to the first half of 2020, covered costs for disinfectant supplies, PPE supplies, and supplies for COVID public safety communications, all related to the COVID outbreak. These funds, as I said, were for past expenditures. We can use those for anything we want within the service and supplies budget. And we've identified several items that we want to increase our budget to utilize these funds. And let me back up just a second, if you wouldn't mind, please. All these new revenues that I'm discussing here, all of them came in after December 31st. That's why it's not part of the revenues that we looked at for that first six months. The second item of revenue that's coming in is actually a distribution the district received from the district's PARS Retiree Health Trust Fund in the amount of $551,000. These funds are gonna be used to uh, require to fund the new retiree, retiree health savings uh, account contributions, the RSH that your board looked at and approved in uh, earlier this, I'm sorry, the middle of last year. The lastly, the district received its first property tax allocation from the county in January. As you're probably familiar with, we get three property tax allocations from the county, January, May, and a supplemental in August. The supplemental is much smaller than the two. In fact, approximately 95% of property tax revenues come in the first two distributions. In this student's distribution, was not $1,985,000, which is a little, just under $33,000 more than last year's first allocation of $1,952,000. Furthermore, when we look at the total property tax revenues from fiscal year 2021, they totaled $3,100,000 and some change. This is actually 247,000 more than the budget for property taxes for this year, fiscal year 21-22. Well, you know, I, I know it's not, uh, when we look at this first year allocation, we, we, I've done this in the past where I can estimate what the year end is gonna be, because generally you get between 54 and 55% of your total allocation in the first distribution that's no guarantee as to what we're going to get a year in. However, having said that, we all know that uh, there's been an increase in assessed value since last year's uh, property tax allocation. Some of that due to the increase in uh, 
sales of existing homes, new home purchases, and also the 2% uh, increase that the county can do for assessed values of existing homes. All this being said is, I, even if I'm the most conservative, I anticipate that our property tax revenues for this year will be at a minimum 125,000 over budget. I'm thinking it's going to be significantly more, probably in the neighborhood of 250,000. But in this case, it's con being conservative is always best. So we're looking at adding $125,000 in new revenues making it available to the district for the rest of the fiscal year. Um, that's one of the, that section there is a new section that we looked at after the original uh, staff report was prepared. Michael, did you want to follow up on that? Yeah, so there's a hard copy of the, the staff report for this item that we distributed um, and added that additional revenue piece, the, the property tax revenue that, that Jeff was just talking about. Um, it also adds a discussion of the staff proposal um, to uh, how to allocate those funds. And this is something we we talked about with the Finance Committee on Friday, but we didn't have uh, that was a Friday afternoon Finance Committee meeting, so we didn't have a chance to update the staff or the, the agenda packet before it went out. Um, and so it's it kind of where we landed on it was an item that has been in, in need for quite some time in the operations department um, that, that didn't quite make it into the budget for this fiscal year as we're making those trade-offs during budget preparation. Um, and that is a, a dump truck. We have one dump truck for the district and it is already um, over oversubscribed, uh, having to run all over the district to, to serve different needs for different um, service areas. And so it was already a, a need, but not a high enough of a need that, to make it into the, the, the budget this year, at least as last year when we were preparing the budget. Um, but then we also, since that time, we've added the underground utility crew. And so it just is gonna put even more demand on that one truck and, um, so we felt like that was the, the best use of since this is additional operating revenue um, that we can count on for for this fiscal year to add that into the budget um, at this point and, and really hopefully optimize the use of that new underground utility crew. Um, and uh, so that's the that's the staff proposal. And I don't know, Damon, if you want to add anything more to that, because you can articulate the need better than I can, I'm sure. I mean, I can paint. I can paint a picture for the board that you know the construction crew uh, uses the ten wheel dump truck that we have now most of the time. However, uh, the collections crew often needs that dump truck and the distribution crews as well. And it all is dependent on projects, emergencies, and then uh, other uh, items that might crop up. Routine collection system work efforts. When we bring the underground crew on board. Having a ten, another 10 wheel dump truck, which is right in place behind a roller for last fiscal year for the capital outlay request is going to actually allow them to just work completely independently of the construction crew and not have to share the uh, 10 wheeler that we have now. Oftentimes that the 10 wheeler we have now spends a lot of time, as you all have noted in the past, running rock to the different yards. So we'll order rock from one yard, we'll drop it off or we'll will uh, take equipment out to work on a project, for instance, up on the pass. And so if if we have the construction crew working on fire hydrant replacement up on the pass and we have an underground crew that's getting ready to replace X service lines in Rancho, they're going to have to coordinate the use of the single dump truck. Having another one that's totally separate and independent now, that underground crew can just just yeah. move. Bertha, um, they talked about this um, yeah. at the finance. Do you want to tell board what your uh, what the discussions were and your um, thoughts on the additional purchase well i'm putting you on the spot yes oh. <laughs> i did that to me i recalled one time hey, well i'll say something if you yeah. want um they did bring this up as a oh we forgot to put it in the package item <laughs> so we gave them a bad time a little bit but we discussed a lot you know about if we bought this vehicle you know the carb issues with you know, and, and so forth. And 
anyhow, um, I feel that it's a uh, good idea to do it as long as we don't have to pull money from anywhere else. If it's only coming from the fund that Jeff had said that it would come from the property taxes, which is the special funds. If we have to all of a sudden come back, because I'd said to him, in the meeting, we were talking $100,000. Is that right, Damon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I made a comment about, oh, yeah, it's going to be 125 or something like that. So anyhow, they did move it to 125 which I still think in the scheme of things, if you're looking at 100 spending 100 another 25000 isn't as such a big hit. It's still a huge amount of money and to me. But um, I think the need is there. And again, as long as we can um, take it out of those um, special funds, um, I'm okay with it. How long a life uh, can we expect to, to to have out of this truck before it has to be road sided for car considerations? Yeah, so that's a great question. So as of right now, if, if we can get a vehicle that's in tier two and tier one, we're good for the next 10 years at least if we can it, and then until uh, we have to go electric well yeah <laughs> i mean that's that's actually that's true so so i'm on the in the aquas energy committee there's a carb group and we're actually working with the air resources board to talk about the electric vehicle transition one of the things we're trying to educate them on is the the duty cycle of a lot of this equipment that we use one ton pickups and up i mean i just there's no there's no trucks in existence that are comparable to a 10 wheel dump truck right now that are electric that can do what we need them to do. So one of the high points that we try to give the card, and this is kind of to answer that question is, we're gonna keep these trucks on the road. If you, as long as you have a tier one requirement for emissions that says if it's a tier one engine, we're great, then we're gonna keep this thing on the road indefinitely forever because we would rather work on this truck year over year then have to buy an electric vehicle in 2027, which is the requirement. After 2027, all one tons and up have to be electric. God, new purchase. It's, so, it's just so sweet. So, right, it's literally, it's literally right around the corner. So do we, so that one of the items that we're struggling with, and one of the considerations is we need to pull the trigger on this dump truck now because we also need to think about training mechanical staff to do they, what do they do? Do they run forklifts that, pull out 600 pound batteries out of electric vehicles to, right. to quote unquote fix them now? Or the, do we keep this 10 wheeler on the road forever? The current dump truck, um, what's the life expectancy of that? As so of today, we, how much longer do we have? And what is the backup? If we so so we that? purchased that in 2019. Okay. So. Yeah, and we kept, so we had an old transfer that was uh, 15 years old, somewhere around there. And we kept the, the rear bucket of the transfer and we just bought the 10 wheeler. And so we we match that up to the trailer. And so now we have a truck and transfer and the truck is new. Um, we're gonna use that. Uh, it's pretty much gonna be the same, essentially the same model that we're looking to. So you to can add. interchange if you have two things? We could, it's, it's not ideal. It was one of the questions I asked of our staff, hey, can we just use this trailer back and forth? And they're kind of like, eh, if we had to, but it's it's really not recommended. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did find my notes in the... <laughs> well, let's let Russ finish his thoughts. Are you... No, I, I, I would just, um, as you have heard me talk about this probably too often, it's just crazy, the, the, the position of putting us in, but um, it seems like a like a good idea. Um, that of course, it requires a, a different license and and um, medical and all that stuff for that. Uh, particular driver would be required to have more training. Yeah, so um, all of the, the folks on the underground crew, the newly created crew are required to have class A's as our construction crew members. So yeah, so there'll be a lot of flexibility with folks who can, who will be able to run the truck. Yeah, one of the things, you know, that came out of the finance department is that, you know, our finance committee is the fact that we've, you know, thoroughly questioned every, dollar oh yeah understand, understand. And, and you know might i say that you know we were responded i mean you know the the reasons were right on you know everything was thoroughly analyzed so that we're not approving anything that's you know going to put us in any kind of a hole it, it's an investment yeah i mean when you consider the the costs associated with 
um, hiring a contractor to replace service laterals versus doing doing the work internally and you roll this cost up, you're still hand over fist saving money doing the work internally. And I would imagine this crew just feels really good being able to make plans and, you know, and we have to give them the supplies that they need. That's right. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. the bottom line. Yeah. Yep, they're they're excited. They're ready to go. We have yeah. the, well, Where will the, the truck be housed? Over here? here, yeah. And I, I I hope that you're thinking about. I mean, it's, it's, the purpose of it is to haul sand, gravel, and and you know, two jobs and away from jobs. But, but you, you're going to learn that you're going to be much more efficient if you have a bunker out here. So you have. Uh, 100 yards of, of uh, class two perm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what you need instead of dispatching the truck to go to a, um, a quarry to get the material into the job station, just load it here and go, that would be much more efficient. It already been discussed. Yep. Okay. We completely agree with you. Yep. Jeff or Scott? I'll um, move for acceptance of this item. <clears throat> I'll second that. You can't. Do we have any public? I can't. No. They do at our meeting. <laughs> so just to really? clarify, though, we'd be we're talking about the um, the whole the, the package. whole package here. That was just one aspect of right. The no, no, no. The capital here. improvement <clears throat> program budget adjustments. Uh, I'm. That's what I made a motion to move on. Is that great? Mm. I just have one more question. Uh, looking at our appendix A budget adjustment and comparing it to what was in our board packet. Um, we didn't have it, uh, you know, itemed out as property taxes on the old one. Why did we, you know, what was the We reason? didn't have that. We, had, we hadn't added that piece of revenue in, in the prior to the agenda packet going out. That's what we added. We talked about during the finance committee right, meeting and right. then we added uh -huh. that later. Okay, but, you know, so we didn't have it in the original packet or right. board packet and, and right. we were able to put it in the right. handout. And, and as Director Skata mentioned, if, you know, this is the, that expenditure in particular, we, we, we have, we think we have the additional property tax revenue in this fiscal year to use for that purchase. But if for some reason that were not to come to fruition, um, we have the special proper special projects reserve fund that is the same intended for the same purpose that we would be able to utilize if we had to. Okay. We have a first or there I, more questions? Yes, I, I would be pleased to second Scott's motion. All right, now I can ask for public comment. <laughs> Any public comment out there, Rebecca? All right, seeing none, so I'll take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that 4A passes. We're gonna go on. Thank to you, Madam President, members of the board. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeff. Good job. Good to see you, Jeff. Next time, wear your mask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to item 4B. <clears throat> Discussion action regarding awarding a contract for Hunter's Reservoir Raw Water Intake Design Engineering Services. Kevin? Hi, Kevin. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, Kevin. So this uh, Hunter's Raw Water Intake Project um, relocates existing raw water intake that's currently located at the base of Hunter's Reservoir uh, to within the reservoir away from the dam. The project's funded by FEMA Cal OES Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. There's a 75 25% local share on the project. The new pumping system will provide more reliable water uh, intake system and new automatic pump controls. The project will also replace the old chlorination mechanical building that's located by the dam with a new building to house the pump controls. The district received two proposals on the project, one from Loomis and Associates and one from Blackwater Consulting Engineers. The proposal pricing and quality of the proposals were competitive with both uh, proposers. Blackwater was selected by district staff because Blackwater can meet the aggressive project schedule required by the funding agency. 
Upon approval of this contract, the district staff will evaluate the alternative design options provided by Blackwater engineers and provide direction to begin the design of the desired alternative. Uh, staff anticipates that it will be have 60% project design drawings and the pump selection for pre-purchase by March 18th. Coordination will be made with the dam operators, Utica and FERC during all phases of the project as they uh, are the owners of the dam. The current uh, depth of Hunter's Reservoir is much shallower than it was when the existing vertical turbine pumps were installed. As a result, the existing pumps have been inundated with sediment that's caused multiple startup failures and introduced discolored water into the potable water system. The new pumping system should dramatically reduce uh, the past issues. Um, staff recommends awarding the design engineering contract to Blackwater Consulting Engineers based on their qualifications and their ability to provide design in an accelerated time frame. One quick question. The, <clears throat> the district um, in the final considerations in the last paragraph of the uh, staff presentation in the in the um, board packet, <clears throat> it talks about uh, one sentence. The district is obligated 710,000 funding through the CIP budget. W was that is that specifically designated for this project? Yeah, that's our share for this project. The 710. Yeah, the. So the total project estimated cost is 1.9 million. So it's a little bit over that. What is the force? I, I'm not understanding. What is the 475, that 100, 475,000? What does that represent then? Oh, sorry. The 475 is the 25% share of the 1.9 million. And we just included in our budget 710 kind of as a, as a guesstimate at the beginning of the year or beginning of the fiscal year? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. Will the difference in the money be per overruns? Is that what we're doing? Uh, potentially, I don't anticipate this job will be overrun. It's, uh, I, I think I'm. We can do. It. I'm sure we can do it for the budget we have. Yeah, because I, you know, there was, I, in my review, I was reading that you know Blackwater, uh, in a couple of cases, wanted to make sure that they kept within their money limits. That they, you know, had provisions for taking care of other things that would cost more money. Yeah, we had, we additionally initially looked at some doing some dredging because of the solid sediments in the bottom of the reservoir, but it doesn't really fit into the scope of this project. Right. Have we worked with Blackwater before? Yeah. I think a long time. A while. Yeah, time. we have. I remember that name. Uh huh. Do you know what we work on? What on what? A <laughs> project. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> My question was, um, is this kickoff meeting that's going to be held on <laughs> February the 2nd <laughs> a big... Oh, we're just going to talk about the proposal and their, their contract and then uh, get them... Uh, They'll come here and, and... Yeah, we'll do a video uh, conference. Mainly, they give us three, three options, a floating intake, uh, it's a fixed intake, Oh. And uh, a deployable intake, and so oh, yeah, and we're gonna evaluate those different designs. Oh, I understand. <laughs> what does the engineering committee have to say? Is that you, Russ, or Jeff? <laughs> Who's the chair? Russ's. <laughs> <Go for a rest. laughs> for today. <laughs> And just to, in, in the engineering committee's defense, we haven't specifically taken this item to the engineering committee since the CIP was approved. We we didn't. Uh, hopefully, it's okay to bring it straight to the full board since there's no there's no real changes here. We're not increasing the project cost. This is this is just a step in the process of a project that was previously approved by the board. I look to the engineering committee to. I'm I'm, I'm com comfortable with it. I'll make a motion if that's what you're ready for. I have some questions, but uh, um, I'll second the motion. Okay, I move for acceptance. Okay. Second. Uh, you have your comments? Yeah. Um, I, I just want to see if I have the arithmetic right here. Um, um, 1.9 million is estimated to, to be the, the total cost, and that's going to be inclusive or 
It's in, or, or beyond the environmental work or the, the no, the, that 1.9 includes the environmental and the design and the construction. OK, but if, if you have 1.9 times our our responsibility as a 25 percent, that's only 475,000. Yeah, that's where this 475,000 came from in here. OK, but the, we've obligated 710. We budgeted in July or in the original budget. We budgeted. That was a question I asked. Well, OK, but if you have the difference between 710 and 475, if you have that left over, we should buy another couple of dump trucks. <laughs> well, that's what Bertha said. What are we going to do with the overage? <laughs> <laughs> I say we let it ride. <laughs> OK, um, I just want to say MSD uses Blackwater for their engineering and we're happy with them. OK, yeah, that's as I say, we have used them before. I don't yeah. remember, it, it was on what, that. but we yeah. have. Yeah. Was it? It's waste facility yeah. Yeah. OK, oh, there you thank go. you for reminding me. All right, any other comments? Any public comments online? All right, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll approve item 4B, awarding the contract to Blackwater. OK, moving on to item 4C, discussion action to award environmental services for the Hunter's Raw Water Intake Hazard Mitigation Project, CIP 11103. Kevin, again. OK, so for this project, we separate separate RFPs for both the environmental and the design. Um, staff was seeking an environmental firm uh, to provide clearances and permitting support for the improvements to the Hunter's Raw Water Intake. The district received six environmental proposals that were responsive to the RFP. The interest in this project of qualified environmental firms was much more than the staff anticipated. Uh, work included uh, completing the biological, aquatic, and cultural built environmental studies needed to complete the CEQA and NEPA for the federally funded projects. In securing the permits, including the uh, Section 401 Clean Water Certification, the uh, Section 404 Clean Water Act for reservoirs and wetlands, and the Fish and Wildlife 1600 and 1602 Lake and Stream Bed Alteration Agreements. Staff reviewed all the proposals, considered the qualifications, experience, schedule, and cost. Uh, Cardno Stantec was very, very well qualified and it had a team of experienced personnel that can meet the needs of the project. Additionally, the fee for completing the work was the lowest of all six firms. Uh, staff recommends awarding the Hunters uh, Reservoir Environmental Contract at Cardinal Stantec based on their qualifications fee for the work. Why is there such a price difference with these? That, that was my question too. Some people want to make more money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they... Uh, <clears throat> There are several different scopes within the project, depending on um, where the NEPA goes with the federal government. So there's some stuff that's optional task. And some people seem to put more money in the optional task because they thought it might be more difficult. But they all get the same plan. I mean, you know, the same yep. proposal that they are answering. And yet there's this so Kevin, did you difference. just say that the scope was different? That some of them are bid on <clears throat> bidding on some people bid the same. They all include all the options for uh, the work. So I mean, depending on if it's exempt or it has to go to mitigated uh, non deck or or whatever that process is, then uh, this cost might be reduced from this amount. This is the maximum amount if they do another mm -hmm. task. Okay. So, so in other words, some feel like it's not going to move to beyond phase X, so they feel confident just putting their stamp on 50 grand, while others say, oh, this could move to phase Y and Z, we're going to 150 grand. And so he has yes. top to bottom, this is the max. So, our so with, 67 is the max. So with Stantec, and it does go to another um, you know, higher up or whatever, are we going to be charged more money or they're going to cover it within this <laughs> no, amount? It, I, mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I would say that it, it rings true that this is not going to be a comprehensive environmental. 
but we know that the state can be kind of difficult at times. So if we do have to move to the next level, is the cost for that included in here? Yes. Yeah, they, unless there's some other permit that comes up. Something not that here, wasn't included in the uh, request for proposal. Yeah, but it should, I don't anticipate it going beyond it. I mean, it would be less. Thank you. I'll move for acceptance. Second. All right, we have a first and a second. Any public comment? Further comment from the board? Seeing none. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Good seeing, job, Kevin. Seeing none. So uh, item 4C is approved. All right. Item 4D, discussion action for award of a design services contract for the CC, the Copper Cove. Yes. <laughs> CC. <laughs> Copper Cove um, Secondary, Tertiary, and UV Improvements Project, CIP 15094. And we have John. Yes. Hi, John. Good afternoon, President Cicada, Vice President Ratterman, uh, Directors. Uh, the, the agenda item before you today is award of a design contract for our uh, CIP 15094. Uh, just as a quick recap, there's three primary goals for the project. One is to design the tertiary treatment process, which is our filters, the UV system, and a dissolved air location system. We're also designing um, the relocation of infrastructure that's impacted by raising of pond, the Pond 6 Dam. And then we're also looking at master planning for the entire process um, for what we just say will be future needs. So that's the over, those are the three main goals. We issued an, uh, an RFP in September of uh, 16th last year, we received three proposals. Uh, we had a, a large group of um, operations engineering staff look at the proposals. We None of us really, there was no consensus reached on who the highest ranked firm was. So we decided, we all felt they were qualified, but we decided we wanted to ask for some more information. We sent some more questions their way and some more information and asked all three firms to update their proposals. Uh, we received their uh, updated proposals and a smaller committee of two operation staff, uh, Damon and myself, reviewed the proposals. In the end, um, we selected Keller. Both Keller and Hydroscience, their level of effort was right in line with what we expected. But we decided that Keller was the most qualified firm. Over the past month, you know, we've negotiated uh, final scope and fee with Keller. And uh, before you was the base contract, there was the, the entire contract. So the base contract amount is $998,000. And there was the optional tasks, which bring the total to roughly a little under 1.2 million. Uh, just as a uh, reminder that this contract does not include bid phase services or engineering services during construction. We'll bring those back later um, once we finish the design. We we want to make sure we right size their work for that, and it's something that we will tackle when we get closer to bidding the project. Uh, earlier today, there was the uh, mid-year budget adjustment that was approved and that will add $250,000 and that will help us uh, meet our cash flow needs for this fiscal year. And just kind of more of a procedural matter and a related note, the way this RFP was written is if the firms were qualified, we could select anybody, any of these firms to do future work at, at the Copper Co. plant. And uh, anytime we need more work, we'll have to bring those contracts before you. But this process allowed us to identify that all three firms were qualified for any future work. So with that, we recommend that the board authorizes awarding the contract and authorizes uh, the general manager to execute the agreement with Keller in the amount of $1,188,301. And with that, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. So Keller originally proposed 674 and they ended up at 1.2. Correct. Okay, so you're, you're comfortable that we're not being gouged for the extra. I mean, they they, they saw that next gen bid at 1.5. So, was there any psychological motivation to go from 600? I mean, it's a fair question. Yes, none of the proposers saw each other's prices originally. Mm -hmm. And as an example, one of the things that all three proposers identified is there would need to be some environmental permitting done associated with both the pond six dam rays and this project. But they didn't put a price and a fee to it. They said, well, well, we'll quote that for you later. And as staff, we said, no, we want a full comprehensive proposal. And those are, as an example, those are one of the things that we asked them to clarify and, and revise their scope. 
So that would be one of the reasons why the uh, the price went higher. <clears throat> then, Their price per hour stayed about the same. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and that's one of the things that we look at when we ask for proposals is that we have an idea of what the level of effort is going to be. And that's where we felt those two firms were right in line with what we thought. So we were very comfortable uh, with the, the the overall value that we're going to receive. So you say when they when the original bids were were opened, <clears throat> the and they they were what's presented on page one of the, the staff report. Yes, seven oh two and and they, those weren't it wasn't a public opening. The other the other bidders didn't know what the what the other bids were. They were so it was a private private opening and just CCWD knew cool. and decided to go back to <clears throat> Keller and Keller, is Keller and Associates the only one you went back to to negotiate or or to have further discussions with or did all all three or two of them two. we actually asked the questions of all three firms oh okay and so what you what we had originally was um you know keller had roughly 3300 hours hunter science had 3100 and next gen had roughly 55 and they all had very like, for example with the environmental scope they all said you're going to need to do it but we're not going to give you a price right now we'll we'll tackle that later and so as an example when we sent the questions and asked for more information, we sent that to all three firms. Okay. And then that's when they all bumped their hours up. And so Hydro Science was still the lowest, and Keller was the difference between them is still roughly the same, but they did add more hours because we asked them to refine, to put some more uh, work effort in their scope to make sure that we had what we felt was a fully comprehensive project. We didn't want to come back six months from now and go, well, we knew we needed to do A and B and C. But we didn't ask them to give us that price, and we wanted to, we didn't want to come back later and tell you, oh, by the way, you gave us money, but now we need more. We wanted to come back. We wanted to come at one time with what we felt was the full package. Well, there's a, the last sentence right before financial considerations. It says board re approval will be required for any future design phase services. Is that not what? Correct. So the way we issued the uh, the request for proposals is we did a two step process, which is we identified if firms were qualified. And so initially all we felt all three firms were qualified. Right. So if we have a, a separate project say, with them, you know, we're doing one of the three items of their scope is to master plan overall the, the facility overall for future needs. And let's say that we're going to have to replace something at our headworks we can choose any of these three firms to do the design of the headworks but we would have to come because that's not what we're asking for approval today we would have to come back with a new scope and a fee and approve or request your approval at that time okay is this the one russ that you're always you know i know we we've, we've talked about copper coal before mm -hmm. is this the is this the hot project <laughs> i didn't hear the last part so you guess. Huh? Yeah, I didn't hear the last part of your question. No, 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 I said, is this the one that we've been talking a lot about? Well, yeah, but Jeff says we talk about it way too much. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. And, okay, uh, so we're finally getting somewhere on it. One of, there's a lot of copper wastewater issues, but this yeah. is one uh -huh. of the big ones, yeah. yeah. Yes, and this will work in tandem with what was presented to you, you know, over a couple months ago with raising the Pond 6 Dam. These, these are two projects together that okay so we're on the we're on the move yes <laughs> pretty pretty expensive i mean we're, we're looking at 700 and some odd days yeah so this really is and i think john really i think you, you use the word comprehensive many times and i think that's that's appropriate um because really what we're looking for is we're honing in on the immediate need for a tertiary filter design and and for the relocation of the utilities to accommodate the, the pond six dam raise and then we also though want a comprehensive plan master plan is a good way to put it of the the overall solution That's for the treatment plant there. facility itself and so there's there's different components here but by the end of the day we will have the answer for what copper cove wastewater treatment plant is going to look like um you know going forward for years to come right yeah. is it is it uh is it formatted in a way where we're going to get where we, where we can have a complete have a design ready product project that we can apply for grants yeah. for each individual aspect or we're going to get a final report it's it's one of the it, that's one of the 
unique aspects of this that has been um, a little bit challenging because yeah, normally you would do that whole master planning process and then you'd hone in on individual projects. But what we know right now is there are a couple of projects in particular, like the dam raise and tertiary filter that are going to move forward um, as a part of this comprehensive plan. And we need them to be ready now or as soon as possible, both from a from a from a, a funding perspective, but primarily driven by operational need. We know that tertiary filter needs to be replaced as soon as possible. Um, and we know that there may be potential infrastructure funds out there that that we can utilize for it. So we need that design and environmental clearance as quickly as possible um, um, so that we can address those operational needs and make sure that we're ready for any potential funding opportunities. Yeah, we've been working with Mia and the Army Corps on on these two projects for years. Yeah. Um, is I don't see any any reference to to that effort. <clears throat> Is is that how, how does how does it how does that fit in with the with with that with that Washington D.C. effort? Yeah, I mean, I think there to a certain degree there are separate tracks here because what we know is, you know, if we're not successful, and I've had this conversation with Mia, um, you know, if we're not successful in the near future in, in securing funds. Um, through that section 219 effort for the tertiary filter, then we abandon that effort and pay for it, find another way to pay for it because the project has to get done. Um, and we folks shift focus probably to the dam rays or anything else that could potentially qualify under section 219. Um, but if the funding isn't there from that source, we'll identify another source and move forward with it because the, the project can't. If, if we get ahead of that Washington DC money, if it ever does come, is can it be used for reimbursement or, or, or backfill pay for a project yeah. that's in the process? Uh, Section 219 is, I, I don't think so. I mean, let me back up from that a little bit. I'm shaking my head no, but I, because I don't think that's the case. I'll, I'll confirm that, but the Army Corps is particular about how they spend money and they would actually want to step in and manage the project potentially. So it's not it's not just a, a funding agency. They're, a, they're they like to build projects. Could we be stepping on our tail here by starting this without them running it and, and then they eventually well, approve it and run it? And or is this that big of an emergency? We're we not going to wait for them if, okay. we, if we can't secure the funding for it. And probably I would say you know this funding this budget cycle so over the next several months we sh we should have a pretty good idea whether section 219 is going to fund this project or not and if not we we cut uh you know we'll cut bait on that effort and shift it to another project we, we, we've been we've been seeking money for the design but now what we'll be doing is switching over to uh, look for construction bonds mm -hmm. well we were seeking money for the project construction overall right but the only thing that we had to offer them was design at the time right, right. we didn't have a project right so we were just offering you know phase one is going to be the design if i'm not mistaken i mean right we knew we've been we've been talking about replacing that tertiary filter well, i know we've been talking about but we need to have some mm -hmm. plans and so i mean I, I think this is a step in the right direction and nothing else get this thing designed and then we actually have a uh, something what they call the shovel ready yep nonsense right and we typically were, they want to see a project that's going to get we show we're showing them we're serious we're we finished the design we're serious we're ready to go they want you to have skin in the game do they, they want, want it was it possible that they would have wanted to do design as well so that's a great question i had that conversation with mia last week actually because um because of their level of interest in project construction um, I would hate for us to go through this effort and have them later step in and say, oh, actually, we want to do it this way. And so we're setting up a meeting in the near future here with the Sacramento core district staff, which is the ones that would be managing that project to, to get an answer to that question specifically. Okay. So they know where we are in the process. And if they are going to want to have a say or, a, you know, a, an, an opinion about design, we need to know. You know, we need to know at the at the forefront of this, so we'll have that conversation with them the next well, week. And this will cer certainly show that we're serious about doing this, okay. and it is necessary. Right. So we won't execute this until we get that answer. Uh, this has to move forward either way. So I'm not. I wouldn't put this on hold for any part when of the Army Corps process. Um, I don't recall if they've responded yet, but Mia sent a request for availability. With our availability, we're waiting for a confirmation of a meeting. Um, but 
I don't think we sh we can wait on any of this effort based on Army Corps timeline because if it gets pushed another year again, like it has for the last couple of years, we're 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 going ahead anyways. Well, to, uh, to um, uh, John, you just recently applied for funding. Yeah. We right. We, we're preparing multiple sources already. Correct. Yeah, we've submitted out yeah. grant applications for both the Pond 6 project and the tertiary project uh, through the state Department of Water Resources on their uh, urban drought relief because we were able to say that both these projects will enhance our ability to provide more recycled water. That's all part of the drought relief process. So we submitted grant applications for, for both <laughs> projects. Yeah. So as you know, Michael said, we're looking at we're Looking, we're pushing over every cushion, looking over every funding source possible, and being as aggressive as we can as finding as much money as possible. I, I just have one question here about uh, your relationship with Keller. Is granted there is a very very small possibility that the core would want to step in and, and assume design responsibility, but can you have a discussion with Keller that this says there's a there's a one tenth of one percent chance that this might happen. So, you know, we 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 may be asking you to to you know, stop what you, what you're doing at some point. Six yeah, not from now. finish paying out the contract amount. Yeah. Well, is there is there a, a section in this contract that that uh, that only uh, puts us on the hook for work that's completed if we if yeah, we were right. brought, or yes. or can there be? And <laughs> is there any uh, repercussion to us? It says that if we want to stop we don't have to pay a certain amount of money to stop. it's our standard contract so we would just pay for work performed and we would okay. we would tell them at this point we need you to stop and we would pay you for work performed and whatever's left on the contract gets put on hold and you're not paid for it. you only paid for what work you have performed okay. to date and we'll hold you to that yes we are Understood. Can you put that in the minutes that we asked <laughs> rush you want me to do this i do I would like to move uh, that we um, award this contract for design services to um, Keller for the secondary tertiary and UV improvements for project CIP number 15094. Second. All right. We I just have one, one final comment. I mean, that's a $205 per hour rate. Did, has any of you guys, you know, reconsidered your career choice? <laughs> I was going to say, I, I should have stayed in school. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any public comment? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Seeing none, item 4D passes. Thank you. Would, Thank you, John. Good job. Thanks. Rebecca, would you prefer that I say that the uh, resolution passes or you want me to read out exactly what's on here or am I okay doing what I'm doing? No, it's all it's there. Yeah. Let's wait off. Well, she doesn't get to take well, roles. Sometimes we do. You won't get to take roles okay. in here. Going? Just real okay. quick, if, if you don't mind, I'll I'd like to that. just commend Damon, uh, Damon and the engineering staff. I mean, we've, we've been working on this R <clears> between <throat> RFP development to today has been probably a six or seven month long effort just because of how many moving parts there are to this, the back and forth with the different firms. Uh, this is this has been an exhaustive process and and I think it's where we the outcome is great. This is exactly what we need and I'm, I'm glad we took the time, even though there were times when they had to hit me over the head and say, don't rush us. We need a little bit more time. Um, I'm glad we took the time to 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 get it right, and um, so thank you guys for the great work on it, and, uh, and I'm excited. Thank you for hitting Michael over the head too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on to item 4E discussion direction regarding the redistricting following the 2020 census, and I want to do something just a little bit different because this affects the the majority of the public out there and the, everything we do, but this more so. So I'd like to see if there's any public comment out there before we discuss, and then I will also ask for public comment after we get our, after we discuss, if that's possible. So do we have any public comment? Anybody want to say something before we get started on this? Seeing none. Okay, go for it, Brad. Hi. And thanks, and good afternoon, directors. Uh, Beck is pulling up a map right now that'll help with some of this discussion and to provide the results of what we've been working on. 
Uh, but as you'll see with your packets in there, there's a few maps that are included, as well as an updated one that I believe we've handed out a hard copy for, uh, just with regards to the proposed district. So we get a better, it just corrected one of the namings, or rather uh, one of each district's names in the northwestern part of the county. Thank you, Becca. So Michael asked me to assist with the redistricting process here. I think by now most of you are familiar that with each decadal or update to the US Census rather, uh, there needs to be an effort on behalf of a publicly represented body like the district here to reform the representative divisional areas and to try and update based on the US population census data as well as any other information that has come out. Uh, it's worth pointing out that uh, included in the memo here, it, it points that the district must adopt any redistricting uh, via a board of uh, board of directors resolution use the federal census and the information presented in the census as a basis for the redistricting and we are allowed to adjust the districts given uh, attempts to try and find equal populations compliance with applicable codes and other considerations that the district has here some of those considerations for ccwd that have been noted in the past include things like topography geography community cohesion and connectivity, as well as other communities, service areas, other points of interest scattered around the county. Uh, and this will need to be adopted by April 17th of this year by the board in order to maintain uh, compliance with the November 20, 2022 elections for some of the directors. So with that, we need a public hearing on this at some point too, right? Yeah, one. <clears throat> so okay. this is a discussion item only. Um, and there's there's a lot of information. Brad's done a phenomenal job on this, by the way, as you'll see when we get into the, the model. Um, and um, but yeah, today's the discussion item. We have a proposal to to to, to use as a starting point. Um, we will definitely have to bring this back as a publicly noticed hearing before uh, adoption. So I would anticipate, you know, we're, we we want to get feedback from the board today, um, and. Yeah, you know, but I would anticipate hopefully approval um, for the first meeting in March, potentially, depending on depending on where we're at. What are we looking at right there? Well, what we're looking at right there is the original divisions that were uh, adopted in 2003. These were based on mostly the CCWD water service areas as well as other pop, uh, other factors such as watershed area and population. Uh, focused on population centers around the counties, uh, Angels Camp, Jenny Lynn Valley Springs area, et cetera. Uh, we'll try and work through and present with some of the maps that we put together using uh, GIS tools. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's moving a bit slow on the screen, but we'll try and work through that. But again, these are the original districts as adopted, currently represented by each of you on the board of directors. Uh, one of the, I'll try and move the microphone here, we'll work with it. One of the redistricting efforts that came out was the Calaveras County redistricting result. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if the mouse is moving out here. In fact, it, it's here, it will fill place on the Calaveras County redistricting. <laughs> it's just a website, Google Maps, to try and assist with the presentation here, but I believe you have all of these in the attachments. I don't anyway. know if it's important to us. If you want me to remove the current and you can turn Yeah, if you can. It just points out, you'll see it in attachment B in your document anyway. Essentially, with the latest redistricting and U.S. Census effort, the county, the Calaveras County Board, uh, provided county blocks across uh, across Calaveras that essentially divide up into sub areas or, or different units uh, that allow us to calculate population in each of those 1,500 or so odd blocks. The county went through uh, effort late last year and adopted in December with the aim of trying to equalize each of their five districts. So essentially selected the blocks that made all their populations equal. That's one of the maps we've provided here for reference is what was ultimately adopted by the county in December 2021. Uh, attachment D in your packet provides some of the statistics for those divisions adopted by the county and their redistricting, how that compares to the original divisions that we had in 2003 and that we're currently working under as well as the final one, which is a proposed. Uh, so Becca, if you can bring up the, the proposed redistricting there, you'll see that in the updated attachment C, a map there, and we can zoom in and, and provide more information on the map here, uh, assuming we're able to, to kind of work through it. But the idea here was that essentially we took the county blocks that were provided, again, these population units spread across the county that were based on census tract, community of interest, other data, 
we developed uh, GIS tools as well as a programming tool that could essentially go through and overlay this with our service area customers. So we had a sense of where those customers were spread out around the county. We wiped the map clean and basically told the program, start selecting these now 2,400 blocks because it's an overlay of uh, customers and population blocks. Essentially start selecting them and try and equalize and try and take into account these considerations. Uh, with five districts with all these blocks having to neighbor one another again these areas had to be contiguous and so we ran that program a few times uh, came up with some interesting results and then using the the adjustments kind of on the boundary lines there uh, just to play with community continuity to, to better understand where our customers were and where they would fit in with with other factors like watershed analysis uh, and groundwater basin considerations others we came up with this uh, redistricting proposal that you see in attachment C and the statistics are provided in attachment D on there. Uh, some of the major changes that you'll see in here are obviously in district two uh, in the northeastern part of the county where uh, rather than keeping that within division two rather uh, we split that out so the McCullumney watershed is fully represented by division two and the Stanislaw remains represented by division three so that was part of the continuity consideration. You'll see that areas in northwestern part of the county are now essentially swapped between Division 5 and Division 1 as, in terms of representation of the Jenny Lynn service area. San Andreas would now fall within Division 1, which would be essentially in the center, sandwich in the western part of the county, uh, between Division 5, which would now include Wallace and areas surrounding Comanche, and the continued Division 4, which would be Copperopolis, Salt Spring Valley, et cetera. So, Brad, if I could just jump in there real quick to provide the clarification on the difference between the packet and what the hard copy that you're looking at right now is just that difference between Division One and Division Five, um, because the the proposal that we that we're put forward keeps the population centers for those divisions together. So essentially, Division One remains San Andreas and Downtown Valley Springs. Um, with the addition of La Contenta, and then it continues. The difference is it continues straight down the middle of the county or to the west uh, county line to include Milton. Um, in the packet, that was flipped based on the computer model to be just the numbers were flipped so that that was became Division 5. But what we provided to, to, to eliminate any confusion is that that will remain Division 1 and Division 5 will um, keep its population center, which is Rancho Calaveras, Jenny Land. Um, there's there's some land that is <laughs> flipped between the two, but for the most part, the, the centers of the population of those divisions, we wanted to, to keep the numbering the same. So that's that's the explanation for the difference between the map that's that was given to you today versus the one that was in the agenda packet. Um, and then the other difference is, you know, I think that created some confusion because the population centers were were kept were held together in the original table that was in the packet you kind of had to compare the old division or the current division one to the newly proposed division five and vice versa and so by flipping those numbers back now when you in the new table that we yeah. provided to you it's more apples to apples one remains one and five remains five so that's the explanation for that hopefully um that that makes sense to everybody and so to point out the the reason we're proposing this this one that you see in front of you in an attachment c is one because it takes a computer-based program with with tools software tools that we had available to essentially wipe the entire county clean and to start picking areas that it could try and maximize not only our customers but population areas so this is a way of looking at it from a clean slate so to speak two we we worked on the edges to ensure community continuity as well as looking at uh, areas along, you know, common boundaries like roadways and other things that that were picked up by the the overlay of parcels, and then three, it does a better job overall of maintaining watershed issues, uh, Stanislaw, you know, McCallum and Calaveras issues in in certain districts, as well as groundwater basin considerations in northwestern part of the county. Yeah, director. I just have a a, a question or a comment on. Uh, I, I think I think it's pretty pretty easy to do the highway four corridor but in in and then find the communities along the highway four corridor from Arnold to Copperopolis they're pretty defined mm -hmm. and and I and I and I think so and it's pretty much staying the same as it has always been and the same way it is in the supervisors and it's I don't think there's that many ways to to do it but the only question is is where do you draw the line across highway highway four 
and what you know what's in the upper division three and the lower division four. Um, you know what, and, and right now the way it's proposed, I see in division the upper division three is 7,900 people, and then the lower division four is 11,000 people, which is the most and one of the fewest. If if that line across Highway Four was moved closer to Angels Camp, it would take up some of that disparity between those those two. Just throwing it throwing it out there that the, the 11,000 wouldn't look so you know, so, so so large if it was if if it, if that line was moved, moved down closer and maybe took in Vallecito and Douglas Flat <clears throat> to put into Division three and then leave pretty much Angels Camp and Copperopolis in Division four. Those two numbers would be more equal. <clears throat> just so just those two numbers. I could take it, but, are you? Uh, neither here nor there. There may be a reason why you did. Do you feel? And I know there's some well, lost. Up can there. I respond to his question sure. first? Yeah, so thank that you. Doesn't get lost. Thank uh, you. Because I think, the, yeah, the the, uh, I think the rationale there is, in in my mind at least, and feel free to to jump in here too, Brad. But um, where where you see the lopsided customer base in district in division three and there's you know we would have to divide up the Ebbets Pass service area to make any change in the customer representation in division three which the district has historically has not wanted to do um, so where division three might be under in terms of population it's got the, the the by far the largest share of ccwd customers and if you move that boundary to include doug flat valcito um and even if you went as far down as you know six mile you'd be shifting more customers into division three um and mm -hmm. further skewing that, hey, that can i respond <clears throat> sure can i respond to that that the, if we look back at the first paragraph of the of what we're doing here and why we're doing it and what are the rules that govern it it says nothing about customers. Understood, but this but, board has always made right. that and mm. part of one of the criteria, as long the, as we're the, meeting the other legal criteria, that that would be one of the criteria that, that this board takes into consideration. And so all we're doing there is just, it's just that balance between the, the customer share versus the population share. So if division three comes in, slightly lower in terms of population, it's more than made up for in terms of the larger share of, of customers. customers. But that's that line is 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 up to you know what where the board thinks it makes more sense as far as community continuity and and the, all of those all of those criteria. Okay. So with that discussion, look at division two. Uh, you, you can't put division <laughs> two into three and four. They, I'm talking about the highway four corridor. You can't. You can't. That's what the the problem. The little the little glitch that we fixed was was. What someone had done before in 2003 to include <clears throat> what should have always been part of either three or four, Douglas Flat, included it in two, maybe to to overcome overcome that issue or that problem. So, but again, none of those. If you look at the, we're we're doing this by because we're asked to by law. There's criteria in that, that in that yeah. in that law, and it's it's written into the. But I um, wonder. But I wonder what's more important now obviously the law will over <laughs> see what i'm going to say break any laws but no no no. we're not breaking it we're not following even, we wouldn't be following the law if we if we divided what it i right. want to ask my fellow board members is what do you think is more important to all the ratepayers of this district to have a better distribution of ratepayers within a district so they could be in my opinion served better represented better or is it just population? I I completely think that ratepayers is is a, is probably the biggest the priority. Thank you. Me. That's what I agree. And so then I look at Division Two, and out of twelve thousand customers, Division Two has six hundred and two customers, and then Division uh, Three has fifty nine hundred customers, and so forth. So I was looking at this, and I know how they tried to carve out. Um, you know, Vallecito, I'm wondering why we couldn't make that carve out a little wider, go up to Forest Meadows and on up for Division Three and come down to like um, just outside of Angels Camp, kind of following French Gulch and right like at the bypass kind of area to potentially pick up some more. I'm not certain. What I'd like to do is, um, well, I don't know if we're there yet, but I, since we have time and we don't have to have this until April 17th, I'd like to put together a committee 
um, of the board members working with staff so we could sit there and, and play with moving some of the boundaries to see if there is a way we could make division two a little bit more um, uh, connected customers. To, to me, when I see this, it's like you have this huge landmass and um, so many people that aren't connected, <laughs> so many people that aren't connected, you know, they're not connected. So what do they care how they vote when perhaps, you know, division three and the other ones for that matter have so many more customers, maybe um, it would be important to them to have that split up between the board of directors having a more um, similar share and how many customers there are to better represent. Uh, That's my comment. And to, to add to that, also on the on the on the population base of, of uh, District Four, you know, again, that's a high growth area. Most likely, you know, uh, District One. I mean, I'm sorry, I forget. We're we're back to regular districts. Yes, Are we done with that old yeah other stuff. So so basically, Division One, Division Four, are the two areas that are going to grow. We're already at 25 percent. I know that one of the yeah. things that we're supposed to be doing is try to try to estimate the growth so we stay equal or, or or we end up equal. We can start lower population as long as we believe we're that area is going to grow because we're looking to hopefully not have to change it in the future. Right. I mean, I look at this 25 percent uh, ratio and and even the 24 percent, they're they're both on population base. Extremely high and district two has absolutely no growth Nothing. potential. Nothing. I mean, so I mean, what we're really going to have a, a pretty big disparity. You know, in the future, you know, we're talking 10 years down the road, we're going to have a disparity. And and I, I mean, I, I think that that is one of the tasks that, you know, that we're supposed to do is, I mean, I, I'm a, I, I do want every director to be accountable to rate payers, uh, but I, I'm a little worried that we, we put two of these districts to be too large population wise yeah. uh, to have an outcome that, because we could end up with 30% uh, district four uh, and district one could end up at 30% in 10 years. Uh, so so I will, is that what we want? I, I don't think so. So I will point out in there that, of course, we do need to aim towards equal populations, but there is the considerations that I note in the memo that we can look at community cohesion connectivity. In our case, that's where we get to look at service area, how we service and where those communities are and where they rely on water sources, et cetera, things like watershed analysis. So within that, uh, if I'm gathering from the board and just to clarify that the customer counts within our service areas tends to be one of the highest factors that we want to try and get as equal as possible is what I'm Sort I think you've heard. So I, uh, I think we've heard from two directors that think that way. Okay. I like to think the way the California Election Code is written and follow it. <clears throat> and and I don't I don't agree with you that customer cohesion has anything to do with rate payers of CCWD or any other special district in the county. So, Russ, what do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, let's well, see uh, what they think. Because if it's only Jeff mm -hmm. and I, then we'll just stick with it. Yeah, well, we've been we've been over this. Yep. A few you know, times, yeah. folks. I mean, I appreciate Scott's passion, but you know, it's it's when it's we're a passion in here. It's you know, Let, mm, let's hear what Russ says. Equal population, right? Okay, um, not equal. Jeff's comments about uh, anticipating where the growth will occur, and I, I agree that um, uh, Division Four and Five. Um, Depends on no. Depends on. This is the handout without the, the whole bunches. Okay, but but these numbers uh, are are they applied to this map? All right, so um, yeah, is that the case? We didn't get we got the new yeah, the map, one. but the but the graph is. With one new, no, the new graph Yeah, if attachment B says updated under it, it corresponds with the updated attachment C one and five switch. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it it is. Jeff is absolutely right that the giving four uh, currently the population at twenty five percent and five at twenty four percent. The, those should come down, I, I would say five five percent each to allow for the growth over the next ten years. Yeah. Um, and then 
you know that that's what you should start at and then where you want to spread those things you know looking at division two you have to you have to admit that, that there should be division two should be this size and this is is division x because there's no population there that's yeah. there's it's granite and, um, above the timber line so there's not, not a lot of population and no customers well, how do you um, feel about anybody want to do an ad hoc committee i would be on it well, I'm, I'm happy to do a, a help also but i, I mean I, i'm pretty much only for i don't really know my way around all these other districts but i don't think we're that far off on uh on Division Five and Division One, I mean, there's I can't really tell from these maps what roads actually you take, right. but yeah, you know, Valley Springs has no CCWD rate pairs, but there's three or four hundred in population there. Right. Um, I'm not exactly sure why we bypass that. So uh, we can and we can zoom in on the TV map here, but basically where the that. where the dividing line is here is it downtown Valley Springs will remain in Division One. But that boundary line is pushed further down to to include La Contenta, so the boundary line becomes Silver Rapids on both sides of Highway Highway 26. So that's why Division One would pick up additional customer base to go from where were they before? Well, even that, I mean, if we slid it up one more and went to Vista Lago, from four percent to nine or eleven percent, because it's picking up La Contenta. Up to where? Up to right there. Where's right See, there? Because Silver Rapids. That's what I. That's what I asked. That it's you know this is, map gets really, really right, in detail. So we can all take a look at it and division. know what. Just the Calvert well, River quite honestly, that's why this is supposed to be working here. We're running into internet connectivity issues here, but this is where you'd be able to like Google Maps, scroll in and see exactly what roads they're following and others. I think we can share the link with you all so you can see it in more detail and find out exactly where the boundaries are. So I'd like to make a suggestion. I think Jeff and I'd be willing to do an ad hoc committee before we move on. Um, Bertha, would you like to, um, hey, I'm running the meeting, right? <laughs> Bertha, would you like to make any comments to Brad and suggestions of what you would like to see, just kind of like what Jeff and I have done what Russ has done and what Scott has done in directions of, oh, like Russ said, maybe he Equalizing. should 5% off of each of those, right? right? Equalizing it. Okay. Not, so not with that being just said. Adjusting. So I, I'm, I'm certainly okay with taking the board's direction on that and putting together a new revised map for you all to consider. Well, I, would like, no. um, I would like Jeff and I to work with you on that. We could sit with I, you. I think there'd be a loaded, a loaded ad hoc committee, Cindy, for a one-sided point of view that may not may not reflect the, the board's position. I well, here's what I'm the saying. The board has spoken on our position. Did Russ, did you? So what I would like to do times. is have the ad hoc committee work with Brad and be moving some of these boundaries to get an idea to see if it can be changed to be a more equal in connections. And if not, okay, so be it, right? So but I, you I don't have want, to have final conclusion out of oh, the ad hoc. No, the ad hoc yeah. committee won't yeah. have final a, a no. recommendation. It's got to come to the board yeah. and public oh, hearing. Okay. But just and, working and with we, Brad to kind of on your model that you've got going on. And I like, I would like to so, say. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. No, all I was going to say is just, just from a technical perspective to keep in mind with the committee, and I'm happy to work with them, is it's not going to be as easy as just dragging lines and seeing updates. It does take a while to put together the analysis and to get to the tables. Happy to do that to provide feedback, draw on. We could probably together. just do one meeting. Can I ask a couple questions? Sir? Sure. Um, are we in, are there certain blocks? I mean, we can't just go uh, house by house. We have the other right. What are the black blocks? What are they consistent? So what I created in there was a parcel overlay with the county population block. So we can go customer by customer parcel and start to select. We can, from we can subdivide like that. We can subdivide. Some reason I thought that we had there were limitations on the tax rules or there were original limitations on the county blocks. So that 1500 divisions they gave us originally that we couldn't select parcel by parcel. I did some GIS tools to overlay, so now we can. But again, that so we, it takes that time. That is just a limitation of. Of our technology back in the day it had nothing to do with the law. It was a limitation of the data. Yeah. Okay. I I mean I I wouldn't mind just going from from board member to board member, and and I don't know if we can do this. Uh, I'm happy to do the ad hoc thing. I just don't know. I mean everybody needs to have input. I think we should do it right here. My I don't think these maps are that far apart. My concern is that the populations are too high in two of the districts, and I mean there's I think that there's. Like uh, in one in five, there's some easy solutions. There's, there's part of La Contenta, there's Vista del Lago that would shove 
uh, shove that up a little mm -hmm. bit uh, that would put more population in District 5 where there's uh, Valley Springs that would put more population in uh, District 5. Still not high growth areas, mm -hmm. but I mean, we have we know there's two places that are going to have substantial growth and they currently have the highest populations. That's really my main concern. And then also I agree that the, if, if 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 we could give Division two some some additional rate pairs, I think that's a that would be important. that would be is what we should be trying to do. And you know, I see it by you know division four and three, they have the highest customer base. And um, I just think opening up. Like I said, just maybe even include Angels Camp because we don't have connections there. Just on this side of Angels Camp, you know, I, I'm wondering how much more connections would it get by doing that? Uh, minimal. So just to, to point out for, for reference, and, and I'll share the link to this map with you all so you can see more detail. It's like Google Maps. You'll be able to scroll and see the boundaries later. Unfortunately, we're not able to do it live here, but those shaded areas that you see along Highway 4, Jenny Lynn and others, those are our service areas. So when you're talking, oh, you know, the 11,000 oh, customers, they're all within that shaded area along Highway 4 coming from Forest Meadows. And so that's what we're effectively going to have oh, to do. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, areas. I don't see it here. Oh, oh, oh. And that one little spot that's kind of just sticking out there like a spur at the bottom, is that Valacito? And that what, that's the area that we... Uh, no, Valacito is further uh, down. You mean on well, extending to the north? We're that's in Division Indian 2 Creek. is the shaded area. Or is it just so small I can't see it? it you got to go off from West Point. Yeah. West Point and oh. Sheep Ranch. Yeah, I think it should be just off. Mm. So, well, I mean, the, another way to do it that I think the district has talked about before is actually completely changing Division 2 to include Camp Connell and West Point. Um, and make it sort of the high country, and that would add take it off at the top. Right, take yeah, it off at the, the top. Take it off at the top, Cindy. Well, and I'm only, I just think that they should have a little bit more connections to better serve. Is my opinion. And if nobody agrees, I'm okay. I just the way you could get the, the more uh, customers in there is to to take this little and section up here, Camp Connell, like they said. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, you know, I Scott just brought this up. Hang on one second, Jeff. Go ahead, Russ. But I, from the standpoint of representing your district, that 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 doesn't make any sense to me because you you'd have to drive all the way across Division Three to get to go talk to me. Yeah, but didn't I tell you they were going to give me a car to use? <laughs> <laughs> but I mentioned that in the winter it might need to be a helicopter, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, I mean, the, the, that's what the, the, the trade offs we're faced with, okay. uh, right? Every time we change one of the lines, it's either going to impact community continuity or it's going to impact population what and customer about base. So, how many customers are there in Forest Meadows? If Forest Meadows, Murphy's has none, if you take Forest Meadows and put it in two, where does that balance? And these are the kind of things that I'd like to kind of see. So, one of the challenges down. there is there's a lot of customers in Forest Meadows, but there's a lot of population there too. And if you look at District uh, Division Three, where it has, um, you know, it has 44% of the customer base, it, it's already down to 18% of the population. It would, um, so that okay, you know, so if you take Forest Meadows, if we take a significant amount of population away from Division Three, we, we would need to find a way to replace it. Okay, so they can have this area more portion where there's what no you connection. What are you giving? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyhow, I would like to see these and see the numbers with it if we were to make that change. And if we can do it outside of an ad hoc committee, fine. But, you know, I mean, if the board doesn't agree with me, I'll accept whatever. I, I just want to clarify that. I'm looking at the wrong damn thing here. District, the, this, the one with no holes, right? Correct. That's, that's yeah. the that's one. The one. one. <clears throat> so actually, District 5 is 24%. Right. And not yeah. likely for a lot of development, right? It's all for the most part Rancho and then District 1 is at. Right, so one would actually grow. If one grows, that actually edges it closer yeah. to. So the that's actually, city. I, that, so I, that's, uh, was a bad comment on my part. I, well, it still applies yeah. to, dis, to to Division 4. Right? It does. Yeah. Yeah. Could I, could I, in, in response to Cindy, just talking to you babe, right now, <clears throat> on the very first page of the, of, of the, 
agenda packet. The, yeah, you uh, read the law. staff report from Brad. Mm -hmm. uh, on the end of the paragraph, it says we're this process known as redistricting, and uh, it's we got to do it pursuant to <clears throat> California Election Code two two zero zero zero, and then go down below the one two and three, and this is what this is what the election code allows you to look at or uh, re directs you to look at is in determining new or amended division boundaries. CCWD may consider the following factors: topography, geography, cohesiveness, continuity. And compactness of territory, and and I think what that what that's doing is you're looking at highway highway. If you just in what you're asking with Forest Meadows and putting it with West Point Railroad Flat and Mountain Ranch and taking it away from the communities on both sides of it, I, th I think we would be not breaking the law, but we would be violating the spirit of of what we're supposed to be doing based on the election code, which directs us how to do this. That, just a quick comment. Well. I I have a comment on that. You know, we 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 have a completely different role in the county, uh, enter the county residents than Calabas County government. We don't make land use decisions. We don't we don't provide security. We we don't do anything except provide water and wastewater service and and hopefully protect the resources. That's our job, and we should be developing these districts to do that bad hat. Right. And so that's one of the things that we did. That's why we changed the, the boundary line between division three and division two to, to match the watershed versus the way that the county has their map driven. Um, so that is water watershed and water resources. And, it, and that's another unique aspect I was going to mention earlier of, of CCWD. You know, most special districts don't have county wide jurisdiction the way we do. And so that changes the population. It, they don't have to deal with this population versus customer question because it's a it, they're they're essentially you know usually united within a special district with ccwd we've got countywide jurisdiction even though we only have pockets of customer base so it it there's it creates there's going to be a disparity there we're trying you know we have to try to strike that balance director adamant's right customer base is not one of the things the election code cares about it is one of the things this board is clearly and i and i don't think it's it's improper to take that into consideration. These are the, you know, the, the things they lay out are what we have to meet from a legal perspective. And if we can meet those objectives while taking customer distribution into consideration, that's that's the goal here. And that's why it ends up, you know, well, customer customer distribution and watershed. That's why it ends up looking different than but, what the county has. And you know, you're right with everything you just said. However, I believe that we need to take we are all here representing a group of people in our district. And I think we need to take into consideration, in my opinion, what is most important for the people we represent. And I think um, I think I just don't think that the other districts that have more connections have enough representation for the amount of people that are connected. I, I think um, they're large, and so one person's going to go and do six thousand, and another person, um, a board member, is going to do six hundred. And I just don't know if they're getting the rep representation they deserve when it's not more evenly distributed within uh, the county. So that's just my my thing. So, um, and you know, uh, can I add something? Absolutely. Uh, what what I'm listening to is mm -hmm. five different uh, opinions, mm -hmm. okay? No. We necessarily, we necessarily represent our customer base. How do our, uh, how does our customer base feel? Well, that's why I asked about public comment to begin with in case somebody had a comment before. Okay, well, yeah, but I, I'm saying in general, not just for this meeting. Yeah. yeah. And with, you know, the most of the population in District 2, I mean, District 2, I think we could safely say is kind of a, a lower adapt community. So in in most areas of the uh, the district and I, I just, um, I don't know, I, I just don't think that there's fair representation the way it's divvied up currently. And if the rest of the board think that's OK the way it is, I will step aside and be OK with that. I just would, since we have a little bit of time, I wouldn't mind seeing if there's just a couple other things we could do. 
And if the rest of the board doesn't want to, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. It's okay. I'm not saying otherwise. Just it, are we okay with what they what they put here? Or do we want to make some changes and direct um, Brad to bring those back at the next meeting? When was the last time we asked our customer base how they feel about our, the board? <laughs> every two every years. Time we put an agenda. <laughs> Speaking as a you customer, I feel great. Well, okay, maybe you hear. <laughs> do you? Hear I haven't heard anybody talk about redistricting, and they won't until we actually. Uh, propose something. I like, I haven't heard of them complaining about their representative, um, but we do hear about the customer service, right? I mean, the telephone well, system. But, well, yeah, right, and that's but, a but, problem we're we're but, yeah, working but, on. Yeah. What we, what we tried to do earlier, based on Scott's comments, was uh, we eliminated the whole Valacito thing from D Division Two. In hindsight, is that are we all comfortable? Because it seems to me that that might put us back a little bit back on track and I have to tell you I don't recall getting a single complaint about Valcido being in Division 2. I get a lot of calls from the people there and well how would that be to, 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 to put that back uh, it's about 100 people 100 customers and that's better I mean quite frankly I hadn't complained much because I didn't see these numbers in front of me like this <laughs> and it's a surprise you know, I was very surprised going, what? Yeah, you know, really you know just, compared to everybody else. Yeah, just just to take it probably a step too far. You know, a, a lot of these are voting blocks. And currently, I mean, you know, uh, and I'm not making this any sort of political statement, but but if you're in uh, if you're in Valdecito and something happens there that you don't like, you've got no chance of sending an elected person into that district uh, if if somebody from Arnold decides to run. Yeah. You know, I mean, and that's, you know, it's always the, I always talk about, you know, Angels Camp and yeah. Copperopolis on the supervisory district. There's, I believe there's more voters in Angels Camp than there are in Copperopolis. Uh. And so if you end up with somebody that wants to run in Angels Camp, they could, it, without a rate payer in their city, uh, yeah. they could become the director, right? right? And so, I mean, when you, when you talk about, you know, representation, you know, you got to at least have that in your mind that you you have to have a big voting block for these people to actually, you know, put somebody, you know, that that is that is paying rates in office. I, yeah. I think you could also make the argument, though, that a person in Valcito might have more relationships with people in Arnold and Murphy's than they do with people in West Point, which is what they would be currently running against. But couldn't somebody from living in Valacito um, run for this? Sure. Okay. Oh. Oh, of course. Yeah. So yeah. Then that's okay. We so had we recently had a director from Valacito who represented, um, although it was on the in the Copperopolis side of the line. But so to move forward, if we didn't make any change to Division Two, does that make everybody happier? Oh heck no. Why? That, that's the worst looking gerrymandering <laughs> map I've ever seen in, in any well, district. I don't too. think it's. And, and it's if you look at those, yes, it is. Um, will you ask me a question? You ask me a question, so I'm going to answer it or try and answer it. If you go back again to what we're supposed to be doing and what the election code says, you, you would never you would never want that. I, I noticed that my first meeting in 2011, when I was appointed. This was in front of us. And we just approved and rubber stamped the 2003 map again. And I looked at this and I said, this is terrible. This but is truly really only because they, they carved out Murphy's. But, but again, right. again, if you look at continuity of co continuity, community of interest, again, if someone if someone from Valacito decided to run for that district, they would be representing Railroad Platte, West Point, Wilseyville and Mountain Ranch. And 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 that whole that whole division two area, and they'd be living amongst everyone. All of their neighbors would have totally different issues in Douglas Flat and Murphy's and Angels Camp and and Avery and. Is, there any, is that any different than 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 San Andreas? Uh, what does San Andreas have in common with La Contenta? Well, well, I mean, again, what does Arnold have in common with well, with Murphy's? It's you it's, can't, it's you can't have it both ways. They're stuff. similar. They're similar. It's hard. It's hard to even drive from West Point to to West Valacito. There's hardly any roads that go there. There's no continuity. Well, I drive by there there's, no there's no topography. You'd be taking. You'd be taking. You know, the uh, going through White Pines to Sheep Ranch before you can get to up, up to Railroad, and, and there is no continuity. 
it's uh, there's no cohesiveness, geography, topography. It would be violating like eight of the ten of these things. To, is the way it's written right now. That that I have I have a major problem with that little carve out and yeah, what I, it causes, I, what some, it looks like. I want to make and, a suggestion. But but Jeff is right. The that until people have not come to us in 20 years and complained about this map, just like this boardroom is empty, and 90 percent of our uh, they don't, not only is this not caused a big interest in an a uproar, almost everything we do uh, doesn't cause a because we're doing the right thing. This was not the right thing in 2003, and it what wouldn't be the right say about based on no one's saying anything about it. It's like they don't say anything about 95 percent of the most of the stuff we do. Just that does not make it right. That would that wasn't the right thing then, and it wouldn't be the right thing now okay. based on the absolutely election no code than, than San Andreas and La Puntilla. No, they have nothing in common. I mean, they literally have nothing in common. Yeah, there, there, there's there's very few communities between. Can I make a suggestion? suggestion? Very few communities. Yes. I'd like to see a draft where we, uh, instead of the, the carve out, the only reason it's a little carve out is because of Murphy's. I don't know why they carved out Murphy's. I have no idea. The population, population. distribution. You okay, can take that's Murphy's still, out of the division. Gonna, that's let it see. We're trying to accomplish more population for district two. But if you take it out of division three, then you, then you create a problem there. Well, let's see what the numbers come out. That's that's why Murphy's is in Division Three. Murphy's is the, how many people are in Murphy's? There's about forty-five new. It's it's a couple thousand. Okay, so doesn't that solve our uh, issue? No, not, it, not it solves one problem and creates that's another. That's, that's the tension here. So There's always trade-offs because it, it, it's, it's, it's a, as soon as you shift it one way, it, it could You've create a problem. You've done a good job. Like so, <laughs> so let's try this. Let's, let's, <laughs> I'm because just, I'm running the meeting, yeah. can we you better get a bit of, try a piece of what paper. Jeff yeah. suggested, <laughs> bring it back, and as you do that, as you're trying to make the change based on uh, what we said, and you come back with a similar, you know, leave... Any a similar adjustment, you know where we're going. I want to see some other options. Well, I, uh, what I'm saying is not just Murphy's, mm -hmm. Murphy's and Valcino. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see how that, and then, see how that, because I mean, it, I mean, it would be continuous. You know, it's, I don't see it being any different, you know, because uh, there's no, well, what about carving out San Andreas? Like there's there's not, there's not road. a driving wagon train. If, if we're no paying a water bill, if we're following so, this, you know, Brad, here's another option. Geography. Brad, that's one if option to go yeah. to the Murphy's. So, what if um, the other option, it's leave it like you did, business. but put San Andreas in, di in Division Two? Okay. Compactness of territory. <laughs> you know, I just try a couple Wait, different things. Put Indeed. San Andreas in Division Two. Yes, because that way it doesn't look gerrymandered, carved out right there. Was that gerrymandered for somebody who lives in that district? Jesus. I know. I'm messing with you a little bit, Scott. So okay. all I want to do is see it. Uh, and anybody got roll it? So, so <laughs> just and I don't want to stir. I'm just throwing it out there as an option. Something else I can do is just pure equalization of customers however it looks just stripes across the county <laughs> you guys interested in seeing that and violate eight at least eight of these uh it codes. would be an interesting yeah. gap it would be interesting so but it would scott or, I just we can to just vote just or we can just vote if we want some direction from this part of the board just keep it exactly like it is and we'll vote on it oh, so that's so oh, no. <laughs> real quick though i just want to make a point so this is a, the the proposal the the way that we ended up at this proposal and, and and Brad described this, but just I want to circle back to how we did start with a map that was based on on um, just focusing on certain criteria with a, in ignoring the existing boundaries, and that shifted Murphy's and Forest Meadows into uh, I think it was Division Two, and that only left from a, on a population perspective, it left only 11 percent of the population in in uh, no sorry. Let's see. So we ended up with yeah, eleven percent of the population in Division Three, which we can't have. So that's why we had to go back after um, after the model did what it did. We had to go back and look at you know the continuity of the communities and the distribution of population. We had to put no Murphy's. We have we have to maintain that population for Division Three. So so if you move the Murphy's, it, you said it dropped Division Three to eleven percent. I think and it was what did it make? What's Murphy's? the number with that one? I can try and pull it up here. That and was, then what would it make division two though? Twenty something? It's okay for everyone else. And when you think about there's not going to be any growth there. 
opened up with and there will be growth in division three division then we're probably no, open that was our one division why did division two have the uh, 27 percent what's different? and division you know if you did that what's division different? two would be 27 percent division three would be down to seven <laughs> but oh, division three in order. population not in customer oh, service oh, oh. So this was one of the runs we did, I think, that Michael's referencing, where you can see that in Murphy's, it actually divides it essentially in half, I think right along, it looks like Highway 4, pretty close to it. And that's where you were saying, Michael, that it definitely increased some population for D2. Um, it brought D2 up to 22.5%, which is which would be great for D2, but it drops Division 3 down to 11%, which we, I think... Well, you don't mind low. Division 2 being that low. And <laughs> Division 3... No, Division, to, we would mind Division... Division two being that low, it, and so that's yeah. why the the proposal okay. that we that's the only thing did doesn't have let's anybody that. Let's let's listen to Jeff here. Wait, I just asked Scott. Uh, going back to the county's website or the county's uh, adopted divisions in Division two, what's different? Because they're the county's at uh, nineteen percent population. Um, Again, I think that that's uh, for the proposal. They're actually they're only at 16. So I, I think that that's a big mistake. But they're only at 16 percent of the population. They've got no, no, no. It takes There's more nothing. of San Andres. You're looking over here. Uh, They've already adopted. Well, that's oh, that's a border right that's down to 49. Yeah. Okay. So they look, how, they look, look how good the, they've done. The, the uh, western side of 49 in division, yeah, right Scott's now, division, whatever that is. So what's different? And the eastern. It takes more. The county Andrea. went out and tried to optimize population to make them as equal as possible. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying. More of San Andreas. Did, where did they? What did they include? More of San Andreas. You can see it up there. You can also see it in your uh, attachment key. So they came closer to San Andreas and got. And it took both sides of 49, and in some cases, it's just, it's just a, basically just a carve out for downtown San Andreas that was left in Division mm. One. They, they also took all the way down to Part E, including Part E and Division Two. You can see most of Salt Spring Valley moved over to right. Wood. So they they moved the Division Two boundary, and we could do that because we also moved the Division Two boundary down to include Paloma, but we could move it even further down what they did to match what they did. So it goes all the way down to party. E. There's not a lot of population in there, but we can move it further down that way. Well, we don't want to boot Scott out of this. That was, that was for you. Well, this that's not one of our considerations. No, it isn't. Is it? There's no hey, one in there. Though. Hey, Scott. No, I, I don't know how, how they did that one. Scott, yeah. we're, we just drew the line so that you, you, you no longer represent your district. Which is not one of our considerations. <laughs> Maybe no, no, no. Anyhow, Brad, do you have some directions so we can move on? You can bring us back to the next meeting and let's see where we stand. Yeah, I've wrote a couple options. Yeah, I've written down some of the options we talked about. Division two from now on. You realize that. It's not really there. Okay, I think enough said. You know what the direction is, right? I got a couple of maps that you wanted to revise on there. I'm happy to do that. It sounded like there was talk of a committee. If so, I'm happy to work with the committee and work with Michael on trying to revise. Well. Uh, and I'll bring back some options for Yeah, next come meeting. back at the next meeting well, and let's see if we yeah. can agree to something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. I, I just I have to clarify though, because I think the only thing I've heard actual consensus on is decreasing the population in Division Four. Division what? Division Four. Mm. But outside of that, are we Division. talking about dividing up the service area in Division Three somehow, and then making up that population in some other way? That, I, I'm I, not I, clear on the direction. What I'd direction. like to see is make the changes that we had, that Scott had, or that Jeff had said, and bring it back to us and let's see what the numbers are. We're kind of going, oh, well, it might be this number, it might be that. Let's see. What what and change then, would you like to see? Um, the oh, Murphy's. I mean, I mean my, my comment was just let's see what happens when you put Murphy's right. Palacito. You know, in Division Back two. in Division 2. So I make think it we a have the answer to that question. Standard. I think that that. You know, I mean, again, and then I caught San Andreas as well. Um, no, San Andreas, I don't think we can. Uh, well, you know what? Okay, so do the Murphy's Valacito in one scenario, right? And the next scenario was, and I'm sorry, Scott, but just you know, just to look, is keep Division Two the way you proposed it, but could you, could you, either put San Andreas in Division Two, or could it be going down 49? You know, west of 49 is division one, 
and east is San Andreas of Division Two, and we don't really have any connections there, right? Mm -hmm. San Andreas, you don't. Okay. Just, yep. just to see. I mean, I and I did. Cool. I would like to see how these numbers turn out when you do those two scenarios, okay. and then bring back. So it could be like we have this proposal today. The two you bring back or do nothing. Four proposals, perhaps. Do nothing and turn it. I mean, if we leave it the, it the way it is. Leave it the oh. way it is. I was a little worried about the do nothing option, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, on your final alternatives, you have the same thing too. Re uh, readopt the existing map yes. is the do nothing option. I, uh, <laughs> correct. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm, just, and I, I'm just joking. I really like all the work that you've done so far, and would propose to to vote on the map that you that you brought to us. Today. They're just looking for direction, no action. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Oh. That's my direction. And and well, again, I'm glad I'm president now. I Moving on. <laughs> all right. Thank you, director. Thank oh. you, Brad. And I appreciate you putting up with us. No problem. And we we'll, just want to see some options. We'll share the link to this as well. I'm sorry we were okay. having technical glitches, but yeah. that'll help to zoom into certain areas. To how, see how hard would it be just to annex in Pine Road? <laughs> That's or, not all the problem. Or, or There's a road. There's a road between the I two. I know. Or Jackson. How about let's give her Jackson? All right, let's move on. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Michael, Damon, everybody. Have you been to Jackson? Right. No. Um, so I do need a break. Can you get through your um, old business and your report quickly? And so we can take a break at a. I'd be happy to get through that. Okay, real quickly. Okay. We're going to move on to old business 5A discussion regarding your district's COVID 19 response plan. Mr. Minkler, please. So I think you have hard copies of the latest COVID yep. pre uh, prevention plan. Ooh. This is this was just recently revised based on the new Cal OSHA guidelines that came out um, earlier this month, and it, it allows us to. There's, there's the, the the main changes are it shortens the period of time when employees have to be out after an exposure or even after a positive um, test. So we wanted to update our prevention plan so that it, it is in line with the Cal, the new Cal OSHA requirements um, and still enables us or well and and actually enables us to bring bring folks back sooner um, than we otherwise had to that's the main change in here um, but uh, also you know we wanted to to just give an update on where we're at with this so we have we've been in outbreak status uh, which, as you'll see in the COVID prevention plan, is is defined as three positive cases within an exposed group um, within a 14 period, the 14 day period of time. We we reached that criteria for the second time. We were in outbreak um, back in August, September, I think it was. We reached that criteria again for the headquarters office here um, over the Christmas break, and uh, have been in outbreak since then because. We keep having additional positive tests that extend the, the period of outbreak time. And th so this is all based on the, the Cal OSHA guidelines in consultation with Calaveras County's outbreak manager. There's a public health staff member that's de designated the outbreak manager. And so right now, based on the, our timeline and some, some positive cases that we had just last week, um, I think we're scheduled to um, emerge from outbreak status if we have no additional positive cases in, in the office. I believe it's next Friday. Um, Stacy, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but um, we're we've had to continually push that uh, push that timeline because of additional positive cases. We've had a lot. So uh, what we could do is we could each um, read this the new updated plan. If we have any questions, we could reach out to you. That sound good? Yeah, an outbreak status means staff have to wear masks in the office all the time. Vaccination status doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's in the, in that's the plan. In okay, well, I, I just want to move on because um, I do need a break. Okay. Are we good with that? Happy any to answer questions any questions if the board has any questions. No questions. What is our, uh, how are we? What are our numbers? Uh, good question. I mean, I don't know the exact number, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're up to. I, I actually I don't want to guess maybe seven or eight. You can bring it back um, to, oh, here over the last few weeks. Just a uh, just a office staff. Maybe seven not. or eight, and we have uh, probably twenty people that report to the office. I, I'm I, I don't want to almost half. Um, yeah. 
those are rough estimates, um, but we've had a lot. Okay. So, fortunately, the good news is, um, fortunately, at this point, everybody's been relatively minor symptoms and they're able to come back to work as soon as the exposure period or the, the isolation period is over. Uh, that's obviously the most important thing is getting people back safe and healthy. Um, and so that's the that's the good news. Um, but we'll keep this in place as long as we have to. This is all based on the Cal OSHA's emergency, emergency temporary standards, and we don't have um, a projection yet as to when that time period will end, but we have to implement those emergency temporary standards as long as they're in effect. Any other questions for Michael? Thank you. Moving on. Uh, General Manager's report. Um, so I will try to zip through this rather quickly. The um, good news, and this is a credit to Kelly, who you met for the first time earlier today, our new customer service supervisor already this week and just the few days that she's been here. Um, did a deep dive in learning how to operate and reprogram our phone system and has changed the phone tree so that it, it I think, you. is a much oh, more streamlined oh, and, and logical. Yes, yes. Uh, and all calls you, are getting Michael. answered. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. All, can we say that? All so calls are being answered. We'll, we are uh, <laughs> we're already making a lot of progress on that front. Um, Flushing is, we are going to start doing some flushing in the distribution system in Jenny Lynn next week. Um, we're doing some customer outreach on that front, um, but that always brings questions. So we'll, we'll um, give Director Davidson and Director Raderman some more information on that. Um, but it's a program that has to has to start next week. And um, so we'll keep, keep the public informed, keep the board informed on that front. Uh, we are, um, not quite yet at the point where we're bringing an OPEB um, update to the board based on the changes to the um, health retiree health benefit that we made to those to those plans. But we have been putting work in on that front and working with our consultant GovInvest on both the the OPEB the, the required OPEB actuarial and the uh, an analysis of the impact of the plan change. Uh, I would anticipate a board presentation probably March. Yeah. We're shooting for early March. I can tell you the one piece of good news is the PARS Trust performed remarkably well. I still kind of can't believe it. It almost feels like we're getting away with something here, but it it the investment of the PARS Trust um, returned almost 30% in the wow. last wow. Almost, almost 30%. We went from 10 million to the PARS. Uh, we'll hear about the error next month. We went, yeah, we went from 10 million to almost 13 million in one fiscal year, and we went didn't make any cash contributions to it. So that's awesome. A relatively yeah. uh, understated accountant that we're working with at GovInvest used the term spectacular, and it seemed like an outburst coming from from her. She's great. She was amazed, <laughs> and she was uh, also amazed. So that's that's good news. It has nothing to do with our plan change. It's just great that 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 uh, trust is doing so well. Um, Would that have any effect on the unfunded liability? Yes, it has a significant effect on the unfunded liability. It okay. cuts into that quite a bit. Um, the, uh, on the downside <laughs> is oh. the uh, CPPA update at our board yeah. meeting last week. Um, the recommendation was that we increase rates uh, 20 percent effective July, July 1st, uh, and probably another 10 percent in the next fiscal year. Based on what? Based on PG&E's um, increased distribution costs um, and their rate filing at FERC to to increase those rates even more. Um, that, that's that's based on a, a projection of what we think the settlement will end up being, um, but it's going to be significant. Are you, are you talking about the CPPA rates? Yes. Electric. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we probably should have kept that PG and E settlement just to supplement our. We still have it, but the good—I mean, the good news is on that front. It's still PG and E's rates are going up for commercial customers as well, and we're still lower than you know, significantly lower than their commercial rate. So it still provides a significant savings, significant benefit. It's just all of PG and E's rates are going to go up, so um, we're not exempt from that. Are we? At, are we anywhere close to looking at <clears throat> solar? We're going to revisit that 
but again, you know, if 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 their if their other rates are going up, it doesn't really. We'll have to look at whether the difference changes enough right. to to change the economics of those. To see if it pencils out. At some yeah. point, it'll pencil out. So we'll mm. continue evaluating. Well, that. do we have to pay for the distribution even if we have our own solar facility? Uh, do you have to? Pay? No. Well, yes, you still have to pay the distribution portion of the rate. You still have to pay our rate. You're just getting a return on it. So that up until now, the CPPA rate has been low enough to where when we look at um, the savings that we would generate from solar, it hasn't penciled enough to justify those projects. But if the CPPA rate creeps closer to the PG&E commercial rates, then I, that could change. Just uh, in response to that, uh, on our next engineering committee, I'd like to have a review of the CPPA rules for uh, providing us power mainly related to like the uh, Saddle Creek. Yeah. Uh, just to find out what, why that was declined, just so we have an idea. Happy to. I've been talking to Dennis about that recently, okay. so uh, I'm happy to give you an update on that. Yeah. But but the folks at Saddle Creek said that they're considering putting in, I think they're moving forward, putting in their own solar uh, generation. And so they, they aren't interested. So said they're really interested in well, is that the uh, golf course? Uh, I talked to. I know, we, we've been having conversations with them about that, so we'll 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 provide you with an update. Um. Uh, the only other thing I just wanted to mention briefly. Um, we've been having some meetings with Lee Kimball at the county um, on on potential public housing grant funds that are available that we can use for infrastructure improvements that will facilitate new home new housing projects and i think it looks to be a very promising opportunity I really appreciate lee reaching out to us and, and working with us on it and so damon and and jessica are taking the lead on pulling together what we think are going to be the most competitive projects and and i think potentially going to be very competitive grant uh, applications going forward so could take uh, what area you know, those um, are really geared towards growth so projects that are um, going to be impediments to new housing development. So we're looking so at copper and um, Valley Springs. Copper are, and Valley Springs are the main areas. Two where potential population grow. increases. What right. happened to Angels Camp in that? Wasn't well. We don't have infrastructure in Angels Camp, but there's also not as much growth, I wouldn't think. Because I, you know, I thought I remember hearing about that in Angels Camp area, but oh, that's okay. I would encourage them to go after it as well. Yeah, uh, that's, I believe that's all that's I have. It. All right, we're moving on board reports, information and future agenda items. We'll start with Bertha. Okay, still, we're still replenishing the um, water table up in Nevitz Pass. It's cold. That's it. Thank you, <laughs> Scott. Yeah, <that's, laughs> I can attest it's cold. Up in Arnold and up Highway 4, I went skiing yesterday and there's a lot of snow. It's so cold. <clears throat> That's all I got. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. Thank you, me. <laughs> I got to dig in this. Don't I know, we're moving along. Let's go. <laughs> Can you stop that noise? It's distracting. Yeah, no. <laughs> Just oh, like yeah. the uh, like Okay, I, I have nothing except a question for, um, for Michael. But yes. This uh, long-awaited uh, re uh, revisiting of the uh, 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 criteria for board attendance and meetings, and compensation for board members and stuff. When yeah. Come back? Uh, pa probably not at the next board meeting, but uh, mid potentially mid late February board meeting. But I, we can have uh, we have some updates on that as well. Cool. That's it. All right, I don't have a board report and future agenda items. Do we need to have a discussion or an update on how the warehouse is doing and what costs and stuff and oh, where we're at? Business. We're on track for completion. Um, I think by the end of this week, we've already given them a punch list. Um, and so we don't want an agenda item is what I was saying. Uh, well, there'll probably at some point will be a notice of completion, although I don't know if that needs to come back to the board or not. But um, I would I just like an update of where we are, how much we spent so far, that kind of a thing. Sure. And okay. I certainly would like item. to see that advertised. Where you it's know, close to, it is close to we completion. We don't really though. want to advertise that, I don't think. 
<laughs> it looks great. No, it looks it beautiful. Is. That's yeah. why I like that. It's come no, together really long well. Long and I do need to take a break. Kevin has done a great so, job managing that. Like, <laughs> we, we, we need some lettering, lettering on the side of that building. Yeah. So CC Kevin, awesome. he's spending a million dollars over here again. Yeah. That's what I'm talking like about. Like five, five foot letters on the okay, side of so, the Okay, so um, the next okay. board meeting, uh, February 9th at one o'clock and February 23rd. So we are now going to closed session conference with real property negotiators, government code section 54956.8. The property is APN 01201101, agency negotiators, M. Minkler and D. Wyckoff, negotiating parties, Calaveras Healthy Impact, Product right. solutions and under negotiation is price and or terms of payment. Do we have any public comment? Seeing none, we'll go into closed session at 3.06. And I just want to call a quick five minute break or whatever we need to. We all get back. Ooh, that was good. But yeah, we're moving along. <laughs>